you definitely have pretty good math skills if you can figure out how to solve this problem. Let's take a look at the question. So the sum of two integers is 44. Now an integer in mathematics is numbers like 0, 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 2. These numbers here are called the whole numbers. So we're talking about both the positive and negative whole numbers. That is an integer. So again, the question is the sum of two integers is 44. If the integers are in a ratio of 2 to 9, what is the value of the lesser integer? All right, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to fully explain this in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so you have to keep this concept of what an integer is in this problem. But once again, the sum of two integers. Okay, we're not talking about decimals or fractions here. The sum of two integers is 44. If the integers are in a ratio of two to nine, these two numbers are in a ratio of two to nine, what is the value of the lesser integer? Okay, so first things first. First is uh, we are dealing with a math word problem. And in any time, Anytime you're facing a math word problem, always use the rule of three. And uh, that is basically read the problem at a minimum three times and understand the question. Okay, now a lot of uh, people who, uh, you know, take on word problems, whether they're students or not students, they'll be like, oh, yes, I understand the question. I just get immediately into taking action. That is a very bad thing to do. Uh, you have to train yourself to be patient. Okay, absorb the information. Let your brain kick in and think about the kind of the best strategy uh, to solve this problem. Now, of course, you want to model the problem, and if you can visualize it, that's great. In this particular uh, circumstance, it's really not um, too much we could do here because we are talking about two numbers in terms of visualizing uh, the problem, but we certainly need to understand these terms, i.e., uh, definitions like integers. We have to understand what an integer is, and we have to understand what a ratio is as well. Because if we, don't, if we don't understand those words, we're not going to really be able to solve this problem. Now, uh, keep in mind that I am going to be using algebra. All right, so what does that mean? If you're like, well, can Mr. You too, math man, you're going to be using algebra to solve this problem. Well, you know, what does that imply? Well, it implies that I'm going to be uh, using a variable to kind of assign or represent the unknown value in the problem. Okay, so what is the unknown value? Well, basically, we're talking about two uh, mystery uh, numbers, right, that are integers. So the unknown value is this particular uh, lesser integer. So I could let, like, the variable x represent an integer or a lesser integer. So that's the whole idea when you are solving a math word problem and you want to use algebra. What does the variable represent? Okay, it can represent all different sorts of things, but if you have a variable assigned, let's say like a variable X or a Y, well, the only way to uh, figure out what the value of that variable is, is to build an equation. Okay, so anytime you want to use algebra to solve a word problem, you have to think about what is your variable or variables going to represent and what type of equations can I build from the information in the problem to solve for that variable. That's kind of the big picture overall kind of strategy in any math or algebra word problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And uh, first of all, let's just review again what an integer is. So an integer uh, is part of the set of the real numbers. I'm not going to give you a whole kind of um, thing here on the real numbers, but this is stuff that you absolutely need to understand if you are, you know, an algebra student. And uh, the real number system is all these real numbers, all the numbers you studied uh, when you were like in elementary school, primary school. And then as, you, of course, you uh, progress into you know, courses like pre-algebra, algebra one, et cetera, you really start working with integers. Eventually, uh, we get into other number systems like the complex number systems, and we definitely won't get into this uh, for this particular video. But anyways, the integers are a subset of the real numbers. 
So uh, they're made up of numbers like one, two, three. Okay, these right here are called the natural numbers or nat naturally occurring or county numbers. Effectively, this is how we count. Hey, I see one horse, two dogs, three cats, whatever the case is, natural numbers, county numbers, and then we add zero, okay, to these numbers, and then we have the whole numbers. And then if we have the positive whole numbers and the negative whole numbers, we have the set of integers. So in this particular case, we're looking for two integers, okay? So two integers, let's kind of go back to the problem here because this is important. The sum of two integers, two integers is uh, positive 44. So we don't know uh, what type of, um, what values these integers are, okay? Now, if it's positive, we know, we know at a minimum we're going to have at least po one positive integer, and uh, we certainly can have a negative integer, or we could have two positive integers. To, in other words, if we add a negative and positive, we could get back to a positive 44. We just don't know what these integers are, so we can't just assume that, oh, uh, these uh, integers are both positive. You could have a negative, you could have a positive, or two positive, so keep that in mind. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, get started on trying to build uh, an equation here. But before we build an equation, we need a variable. So I'm going to let x represent an integer. Now, there's different ways you can kind of go here uh, to solve this problem. But uh, if you're not quite sure, uh, like if you said, well, I'll let x represent the smaller, okay, the lesser of these two integers. Well, we're going to run into this uh, uh, situation right here that the ratio of these integers are 2 to 9. So it's better in this circumstance to just let x equal an integer. Now, it's not the actual uh, number that we're looking for, which is this lesser of the two integers, uh, which have a ratio of 2 to 9. So we need to uh, figure out what does this mean, ratio of 2 to 9. Well, basically, if you have the numbers 2 and 9, these two numbers right here have a ratio of 2 to 9. In other words, I could write this as a fraction 2 over 9. Uh, so the fraction bar is the word 2. Okay, you could also write uh, this as uh, 2, the colon uh, symbol, and then 9. Okay, this is 2, all right? So this is a uh, notation that we use in math to represent a ratio. But a ratio is effectively a fraction, and this gets into a, a much bigger kind of topic about ratio, rates, and proportions. We're going to kind of keep it simple for the purposes of this video. But uh, basically, if you had two people, uh, let's say we had... Uh, two cars and nine trucks, right? We have a total of 11 vehicles, two cars and nine trucks. The ratio between cars and trucks would be two to nine. Okay, so we're making a comparison. We could write that as a fraction like this as well. Okay, so uh, whatever this integer is, let's say this integer was one, okay? Uh, what we would still have the same ratio uh, if we wrote these integers as two x uh, and 9x, right? So if x was 1, this would be 2 times 1. So 2x and 9x are uh, two integers in the ratio of 2 to 9, okay? So, uh, of course, we don't know what x is, but these integers right here, because we're defining x as an integer, have a ratio of 2 to 9. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And now if you understand that, well, then we have a model representation of our two integers. Now we need to solve for x. And how can we solve for x? Well, we need to go back to this part of the problem. And this part of the problem said the sum of two integers is 44. Okay, well, we already know that one of our integers will be 2x, the other is 9x because these two integers are in a ratio of 2 to 9. And the sum of these two integers is 44. Well, we're well on our way to figuring this out because we can build an equation. Okay, so here's our two integers, 2x and 9x. Now, again, we need to be careful at this point in the problem and not just automatically assume that 2x is the lesser integer. If we have a negative value going on, that can kind of throw things off. Now, it's going to turn out in this case that 2x is the lesser integer, but just always be aware uh, that you are dealing with both positive and negative numbers. But the sum of these two integers is 44. So meaning that if we add them up, remember the sum is where we actually add two or more numbers. So the sum of 2x and 9x is 2x plus 9x 
is 44, right? The sum of these two integers is, now anytime you see that word is in a math word problem, that means the equal sign. So the sum of these two integers is 44. And now really, this comes down to your ability to solve this basic, lovely linear equation. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wouldn't stop and interrupt this awesome little math video if I didn't need your support. Now I'm trying to support you in terms of learning math because I just love teaching mathematics, but you know, I am a teacher at heart and you know, I can't do what I love to do, which is teach if I don't have students and the more students I have, the better. And my channel is all about really changing people's attitudes about learning math. There's so many people out there that struggle with math because they just don't like math. And if I could try to teach math in a way that people like and understand in a comprehensive manner, then I feel like I am doing a good little tiny thing in this universe. But anyways, I need your help and I'm certainly not <laughs> shy to ask for it. And the best way you could support this channel is just to hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get back to the rest of this problem. So here is our lovely equation. So here's our two integers in the ratio of two to nine, and the sum of these integers is 44. So two X plus nine X is equal to 44. We want to solve for X. So two X and nine X, these are course-like terms. So two and nine is 11 X. So 11 X is equal to 44. So to solve for X, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 11. So 44 divided by 11 is four. Okay, so X is equal to four, but what does that mean? Well, we're not done yet. Well, we have to kind of go back to our original setup, right? So we stated that our two integers in the ratio of two to nine is two X and nine X. And now that we know that X is equal to four, I could just replace these fours with, um, I'm sorry, these X's with fours, and we could just plug in to see the actual value. So we could see our integers here is eight, two times four is eight, and nine times four, is 36. Of course, if we add these up, we'll get 44 and 8 and 36 are integers. And the lesser integer, of course, is 8. Okay, so that is that for this particular problem. Now, if you want to get better at solving algebra word problems or math word problems, you have to first learn the skills involved. Too many people and students, you know, they get frustrated because they're not learning the skills. Remember, solving a word problem is an application of the skills that, you know, you need to understand. So if you are in algebra, or if you're at that level of math, you need to understand you know, how to solve equations, what a variable represents, a ratio, proportion, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if you like my instruction and you want my best uh, instruction, my full, most comprehensive instruction, that's what I do in my math courses. And you can find links to my most popular math courses in the description because I actually have like 160 different uh, math courses. Many of those are specialized kind of test preparation courses. But uh, if you are in like say Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Pre-Algebra, you'll find links to those in the description. Now, if you are not a math student and you just want to relearn mathematics, you gotta check out these two courses here. So the first is my Math Foundations course. That's a little mini course just to kind of get you um, you know, uh, back up to speed on basic math, arithmetic, decimals, uh, place value, fractions, uh, all that kind of good stuff. You absolutely need to have a strong foundation if you want to learn, uh, you know, algebra and beyond. And if you do want to learn algebra and beyond, well, check out my math skills rebuilder course. In that course, I do cover all the basic math and uh, math foundations course, but also I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, some basic trigonometry, and even some basic probability and statistics. And all my courses are self-paced. So you know what? They're designed for you to take your time and, you know, kind of go through the material that works at a pace for, uh, you know, your lifestyle and your interest. But uh, hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.